I'm not surprised that they've caved in the way that they have, but Unison should know better. And Unite is showing that they, that they lead the way on this stuff. The fact that one union has decided to not acquiesce to the government's demand on this has laid the groundwork and laid the blueprint for the remainder of those unions to at least change tack in the future and to also signal to the membership to not vote for these things, right? The, the leadership can say what they want about whether they think that this should be voted and approved by the membership because the membership are the ones who have the final say at the end of the day. So there has been an agreed pay deal between some of the unions in the health sector and the government. I say some of the unions because there is not a, there is not a united front with regards to strike action uh, and with regards to negotiations between health workers and the government. There is now a split between um, Unite, who want to reject the pay offer, and GMB, the RCN, and Unison, who represent the rest of the health sector workers, who have an, who have who have recommended to their own membership that they should accept the offer when it actually goes to a vote in the union membership. The th Unite are still doing that, but they're not making a recommendation to accept the pay deal. So let's look into it a little bit more. The government has confirmed it is making a sig let me move that over there. There we go. The government has confirmed it's making a significant new pay offer into NHH staff in England, including a one-off bonus which unions amount says amounts to £2.5 billion, which is still less than what they say they're going to be raising the defence spending by, but I digress. The Health Secretary, Steve Barclay, has said his officials have been in intensive talks with health unions to try and end months of disruptive strike, strike action. The government and the NHS Staff Council, which includes the unions, released a joint statement on Thursday, which said both sides believe it, ref it, it represents a fair and reasonable settlement that acknowledged the dedication of NHS staff while acknowledging the wider economic pressures currently facing the UK. The statement confirmed the offer included additional pay for 2022-23 and a pay settlement for 23-24. The unions say this includes a one-off payment of the current year worth for £1,500 for lower paid staff and £3,500 for better paid staff, and there will be a 5% pay increase for the coming year, which is likely to be above inflation if forecasts are correct. Although they've not had a pay rise properly this year, so they're still below where the inflation... Like the, because, so I think it's worth pointing out what I've been saying the entire time has come completely true. And the only reason why people like Steve Barclay were happy to continue to let strikes happen was so that they could deliberately put off negotiations to make sure that negotiations were being done when inflation was coming down so that they could give a bad pay deal for a pay increase uh, but justify it by the fact that the headline inflation figures were down because right? inflation marks the 12 month period beforehand and the overall increase in incre rate of increases in prices over that time whereas the long you wait when you actually go to those negotiations if the headline figure is coming down, it's because the previous months at the start of that 12 month period have been knocked out of where, the, where they're ag actually aggregating those statistics from. So, for example, you wait six months' time and you say inflation is 6% now, it's gone down, so we can only give you a 6% pay rise, for example. Prices are still 13% higher, right? Pay prices haven't gone down, but the rate of increase of prices have gone down. So, by waiting up, oh, sorry, by waiting out of the clock, what they've been able to do with this, with this now, is by able to give a crappy pay offer under the proviso that well inflation's lower now so you have to accept this crappy pay offer whereas you know when they were originally the rcn were originally looking at 19 percent as a pay rise which is you know exactly what they fucking deserve and they're not going to get it they're not going to get it i mean it was unlikely for them to get it regardless anyway but because the clock has been wound down there's now significant justification as far as the government is concerned for a five percent pay increase at this time which is pathetic. Like it's almost a quarter of what the RCN were asking for, and doesn't and the one-off like lump sum payment that's being given does not actually fix any of the real issues. I mean, sure, it's good that they're going to give a bonus to 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 to, to NHS staff. Fine, we'll give give them a bonus. I'm happy with that. But the issue with what's happening here is not just about remuneration for the nurses who've done a great job during the pandemic and the ambulance workers and all the other stuff. And I'm not saying that they haven't because they obviously have. It's clear as day to anybody and they deserve the money. They deserve a big pay rise for a second reason. And that this is not just about um, the wages of people in the, who exist in the NHS currently. The real issue that we're having in the NHS at the moment is recruitment and retention. And unless you actually properly have pay restoration for this group of people. Like, the, like 
for once one of the people who I absolutely despise is correct on this issue Anna Subaru was pointing out on question time if you are a conservative you fundamentally must believe in the values of the market and if you are having a mass exodus of nurses while not being able to recruit to fill those spaces the market is telling you that you are not offering nurses enough to stay in the fucking job anymore and they will go elsewhere and that's the long and short of it the reason why pain needs to go up and needs to be restored back to you know as, well, as we put it back from where they were in 2010 is not just because we need to make sure that current nurses stay in the role because they do need to stay in the role but we need to have a massive recruitment drive for nurses to be able to plug the gaps that's making nurses leave for not just pay because people aren't just leaving because pay is bad people are leaving because the issues with staffing that we are currently have because of a lack of recruitment and retention has made the job harder for people who still work there where even if they get paid more they would still leave because the job is not rewarding enough and it's too difficult the only way to fix that is proper pay restoration and a salary that is high enough to attract more nurses and more, more hospital staff into the NHS. And that's fundamentally what this pay deal does not do and why the lump sum is even worse than it looks. Even if you include the lump sum and then the 5% pay deal next year, it's still, you know, what, <clears throat> uh, something akin to, you know, an 8% pay increase this year followed by a pay, followed by, you know, not a really real pay rise next year because it's a 5% pay increase from the pay before inflation happened. So they're already getting, an, getting a real terms pay cut because of inflation after a decade of continuous real terms pay cuts. It, it's absolutely ridiculous that the unions have caved on this. They should be standing their ground, not just because they represent staff who deserve proper pay restoration, but because this signals the death knell of the NHS completely. And you're right, Hags, they do want to destroy the NHS. And their method of doing so is by saying, well, we, can, we want to push as many nurses as possible into the private sector. They want to justify um, under, undercutting the private sector as far as wages are concerned so that private sector providers can give and provide better wages for nurses than the government can afford to. And then what happens is the government pays the agencies to be able to do it anyway and has to spend the money regardless. What's ridiculous as well from this is that the money for this pay increase is coming out of the remainder of the NHS budget, which is already stretched far too thin because it's been underfunded chronically for a decade. So where are those cuts going to come from rather than putting additional funding in, considering that they spend all this extra money on defence? Considering all the extra money they're spending on giving out, you know, prizes for people who do, you know, who have the most significant breakthrough with regards to AI technology or some other boondoggle like that or a fucking quantum computer. We could be putting that money into the NHS, but that's not happening. It's not happening. In fact, we're having a public sector, essentially a public sector austerity freeze, which we'll come to later in my budget analysis. It's fundamental. It's not just a, like, it's fundamentally about the future of the NHS, which will die. It will die unless we have you know the actual as far as the labor market is concerned we are paying market rates for nurses because we currently are not because that's why we can't retain and can't recruit and the unison the are and, and especially the rcn they should know this they should know that this is the fundamental issue here is not just a fight for pay it's a fight for the existence of a public of a nhs free a public a public nhs free point of use because it won't exist any longer if nurses keep living in the way that they are. And a lump sum payment for only existing nurses, that won't apply to recruited, new recruit, newly recruited nurses, alongside a real terms pay cut as far as the actual salary is concerned, in just in the last just in the last two years alone, not counting the decade before where they were continually getting real terms pay cuts over that period too. Um, and Unite are correct. Do not recommend this. In fact, they should do more. They should abs they should absolutely recommend their, their their membership to turn it down. And so should the rest of the unions. This is going to be uh, an indelible mark on the leadership of the RCN, Unison, and GMB. An indelible mark on these union leaders for the remainder of their career. They, their their career as union leaders is hanging by a thread. Because as people as people are rightly pointing out in chat, the nurses the striking nurses have overwhelmingly high support amongst all of the country right they could absolutely continue this fight with the government i know pat cullen is of the opinion that if they turn down this offer they will only be forced to accept a worse offer later and i think that that is ridiculous thinking considering that you know the government knows that if the nhs goes under that they, they they will be fucked forever they will become a political irrelevance forever every single person who works in the party will never be in politics again 
the NHS is, you know, the sacred jewel that can never, ever, ever, as far as, and can never be obviously destroyed as far as the Conservatives are going to, it can only be done so surreptitiously. So for them to be seen to not be in doing things in favour of the nurses is only helping the political, the political um, desires of the unions who are organising in this particular fashion. They have so much, they, they literally could be on strike forever and the, the public would still not lose their support. Yet, you know, Pat Collins is completely caving on this stuff because, it, I, mean, I mean, it's unfortunate, but Unison are just too right-wing of a union to be the ones who are being taken to this fight. And the RCN, bless them, um, are, <clears throat> obviously, it took a lot to get them to the strike action in the first place. I'm not surprised that they've caved in the way that they have, but Unison should know better. And Unite are showing that they, that they lead the way on this stuff. And God, thank, thank Christ. Thank Christ Sharon Graham won the union leadership election and not, Ger and not um, uh, Gerard Coyne, or whatever his fucking name was. Because we'd be in deep shit if there was a united front as far as the unions are concerned. Because at least the fact that one union has decided to not acquiesce to the government's demand on this has laid the groundwork and laid the blueprint for the remainder of those unions to at least change tack in the future and to also signal to the membership to not vote for these things, right? The, the leadership can say what they want about whether they think that this should be voted and approved by the membership. Because the membership are the ones who have the final say at the end of the day. And luckily, because Unite have actually taken the positive um, stand on this one, the pro-NHS stand on this one, we may see members of the un other unions follow suit when it comes to ballot around the actual pay deal itself. And luckily, the BMA and the junior doctors, are st that strike is still happening. That strike is still going on. We still have that to look forward to, I guess, folks. So it's not the end of the NHS strikes. But having the nurses coming off of strike because they've reached a crappy pay deal with the government is the worst of everything. It, 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 essentially, it essentially gives the government a free license to be able to push around the public, public sector even more than they're doing so now. By capitulating now, what are you saying? What message are you sending? So not just the population about what nurses will or will, will or won't take, but what the government about what the nurses will or won't take. And it's, per, it, it's a crappy deal. I mean, Richard, um, Richard Murphy on, on Twitter was taking it down as well. See if I can find, let me see if I can find the, the thread of when he, when he was discussing it, because it was really, really well broken down about how poor of a pay deal that it actually is and why the unions are absolutely crazy, crazy to recommend accepting it. Let me find it. Heard very little from Labour apart from get round the table interviewing campaign for work. So I mean, Rachel Rees was taking call-ins on on LBC, and she basically said the exact same thing about we would sit round the table, but knew that we don't realise there's not a ma magic money tree to be able to pay people, despite the fact that there clearly is because we have money for bombs, but we don't have money for nurses. Example, for example. Let me find it. Let me. Here's the thread. I've done my workings on the NHS pay deal and I'm completely baffled that any union would accept this offer. Assuming we have someone on 30,000 who got the 3% pay offered in 2021 and their pay in 2022, it doesn't work quite like this, but it's will do for illustration. I assume inflation of 5% in 2021 and 10% in 2022, falling to 3% in 2023 and 1% thereafter. These may well be fair. And it looks like that's based on the OBR forecast. That sounds about correct. Then I allow for £3,000 one-off payment in 2022, which may be too high again, but use it for illustration. So he's actually giving, he's being lenient to the government with his calculations here. So that's really important that we, that, we, that we take that into account. That boosts 2022 pay backdated from 30K to 30K, 30.9K to 33.9K, which is well above the inflation requirement that year. Then I allowed for 5% pay supplement in 2023, which I gather has been offered. After I add 1% pay rise for each of the following years, because that is what the budget says the government will permit. It's, well, it's really important to um point out here as well that when people talk about the um the independent pay review bodies they suggest pay increases based on what the, the government's initial already allocated budget so the independent independent pay review bodies are not really independent because they're in they're, the decisions they make are entirely dependent on, on what the, the government's budget they've set out already is but doesn't actually properly explain what this what they're saying there for example, in 2023 outcome is as underpaid as 2022 was overpaid, so all well and good so far, you might say. 
how the twenty four on deal how the twenty twenty four and onwards deals are dire. One percent sounds fair, but it is being applied to pay that now takes no account of that twenty twenty two one off payment and has instead been inflated by below inflation play rises uh, on base 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 pay in both twenty two and twenty three. In fact, this deal means a very big real cut in terms of pay from 24 and on when compared with what we would have been paid if inflation had been matched from the 2021, 22 and 23 deals. I stress this is an illustration. But over five years, this deal might cost the person who used for illustration more than £8,600 in lost pay, and that loss will continue forever thereafter. This deal locks the 8% loss in real pay for good. So while unions are saying such an appalling deal and good for their staff, I am completely baffled. But more than that, let's be clear how bad this is for the NHS, which is never going to attract the staff it needs on the basis in the future. If this deal is as I read it, and I only have media reports to go on, then this is the death knell for the NHS. Why would unions allow that? And if so, why? And why isn't Labour already saying this is terrible? My recommendation to NHS, is, NHS staff is very clear. If the deal is anything like this, then reject what is on offer, and ask anyone recommending it to show their working, as I have done, and over the time period I have used, and not just last year and this year, because they produce a deeply misleading result. It's the least they need to do, and good luck. At the NHS, the first line defence, we're an island with nukes, not a clever place to attack. I mean, the NHS is the first line defence as far as the as far as the labour movement is concerned. As far as uh, the important part, again, is always going to be public support for these kind of things, and the nurses will continue and will always get public support as long as they continue to strike. So they always have the ability to be able to withhold their labour without damaging their reputation and damaging the institution that they claim to represent because it is so well loved not just as institution but the staff themselves are well loved by the population too. And every single every single poll you see will show you that. So by capitulating, and by essentially being the first group here to capitulate, as far as the public sector are concerned, on a crappy pay deal from the government, that sends the message to the remainder of the unions that, and the remainder of the and, the and to the public that the remainder of the unions should the remainder of the unions should also follow suit as well. And it's going to be deeply damaging as well. And again, I I, I cannot stress this enough how damaging this is for the future of the NHS. But the reason why they're asking for 19% in the first place, I said, actually, that's why I said at the time, like the, the thing they should be pushing for is a high pay, in, high pay increase now under the assumption of a pay freeze later. Because you have the high pay increase now, you fix the retention problem basically overnight. You fix the recruitment problem basically overnight, right? You get the nurses back into the actual NHS staff, make the job easier, get the recruitment drive to have the staff levels available to ensure that being able to do people's jobs is actually something that is manageable rather than completely out of control due to understaffing. And then you can, you know, you can deal with, you know, falling pay over time in real terms after you've put people back into jobs to maintain recruitment and maintain retention. But that's not going to happen now because instead of what's happened is the complete reverse. They've got a deal for later down the line when the crisis is over and all of the nurses have all left and they've not been able to retain anybody and they've not bothered to recruit. So the NHS is still in the dire state and continually falling into neglect and disrepair. And they've got a big pay pack. They've got a big bonus pay for this year, which then doesn't reflect in the percentage pay increases they're going to get every year thereafter. So they're going to continue getting real terms pay cuts because they've had their pay matched this year without having it structurally increased to be where it should be for actual pay restoration, which is what the RCN said they wanted in the first place. They said they wanted pay restoration. They're getting the complete opposite. This deal, which involves having the bonus, is the literal worst of both worlds because it, it hits long term pay badly and it hits recruitment and retention badly, which is, as far as I'm concerned, is the actual real issue here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the nurses are correct and they're correct the, as far as they want concerned. They just want more money now. But I think the long-term future of the NHS and the long-term future of the labour movement is far more important than uh, whether or not they, you know, they're getting a specific bonus this year. Because I really, I, as Richard Murphy has pointed out there, in the long term, it's not good and it's not acceptable and they shouldn't accept it. They really, really shouldn't. Rachel Harrison, the National Secretary of the GMB, said thanks to the strength and hard work of GMB's NHS members, the government has gone from refusing to talk about pay to putting an extra £2.5 billion on the table for this year. GMB members should rightly be proud of themselves. It's been a tough road that they have faced down the Department of Health and won an offer that we feel is the best that can be achieved at this stage through negotiation. It's pathetic. How? Like, it's 5%. You could have 19% pay cut over 13 years. What are you doing? 
Unison said of health Sarah Gorton said it's a shame it took so long to get here. The health workers had to take many days of strike action and thousands more had to, had to threaten to join them to get the union into the Roman proper talks underway. underway. She said the offer would boost pay significantly this year and mean a wage increase next year that's more than the government had budgeted for. The RCN, which infuriated some of the other health unions by unilaterally entering talks with Barclay last month, said it had also secured a new pay structure for nurses to come into force from 24-25. The RCN General Secretary Pat Carlin said a member's historic decision to take strike action had been vindicated. After tough negotiations, there are a series of commitments here that our members will see will make positive impact on the nursing profession. However, Unite, which represents fewer NHS workers than most of the other unions involved in the dispute, said it would not be recommending the offer. Saren Gray and the Gen Sec said that it is clear the government has not, does not hold the interest of the workers of NHS at heart. So, yeah. Someone high up in unions and angling for a peerage, I mean... I wouldn't be surprised. More than the government had budgeted for, so a pittance and a pat on the head. I know, right? Maybe they'll have a pizza party. But I really, I really am very disappointed in what's happening here. And I'm glad to see that Unite have taken a stand on this one. And we'll see what happens when the members vote. You know, it may, the members may reject the deal anyway. They, and I urge them to do so. I, they should reject the deal. But, I, I, you know, it remains to be seen at time of recording. I mean, what about NHS Million is saying about it? Um, yeah, here's Harry, Harry Eccles here. Um, saying we've not done all this for a measly below inflation five percent this is still a pay cut we must say no to this awful offer retweet if you agree with the nhs staff to deserve a fair deal well i will retweet that right now let me have a look and see what the what people are saying about this and it's just million i wonder what they say uh, 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 uh. 5 percent won't improve retention and five percent won't increase recruitment five percent leaves the most nurses many other staff around four thousand four hundred pounds worse off than in real terms in 2008 the government need to do so much better than this for the nhs in crisis i wonder if they're actually recommending to vote against it that would be more important wow someone here cancelled their union membership for the very for for the them asking to accept that's crazy nursing notes saying that they didn't think that the deal is very good like four thousand four hundred pound worse off again those numbers are still coming it looks like the actual nhs staff themselves from the grassroots groups who aren't represented by the top and the the unions who are doing the negotiations it looks like they are they they are not in favor of it we shall see i mean if, if they do reject it it'll be it'll be absolute turn out for the books if the union's reclamations get rejected by the member base Julie Grace Patson's big a big voice in this thing. Uh, that what she says. Hmm. Nothing there. So you know. It looks like from the graph, I've not seen anybody on Twitter or from any of the actual on the ground NHS groups say that they think that they should agree with the union leadership on agreeing with the on the with the pay offer, which is encouraging, which is very encouraging. Echoes the rail union leadership exception the crap deal the members rejected in the US earlier this year. Well, yeah, that is true. That's a, that is a, that is an interesting parallel. A parallel, isn't it? And also. Similar to the break between RMT and the TSSA on the ne their negotiations with Rail Delivery Group, for example. We sh mm -hmm.
wonder what the, resp wonder what the responses to the RCN are actually on Twitter. That'd be really interesting. And it's not just Unison that melts, right? It's Unison, the RCN, and GMB. I mean, we all knew GMB was a scab union already, so he gives a fucking shit. But, like, Unison should know better. They're the, they are the second biggest union in the country. And I think that they're, the RCN and Pat Cullen ha are naive in their discussions. Because, again, they've not taken strike action in a fucking, de in a fucking century, so... Responses full of people saying they're not accepting the offer. Okay. I have I have high hopes that the membership will reject it. This will be a developing story, but we'll see. We'll see. They absolutely should not accept it though. Hundred percent. Do not do it. Do not accept it. It it's not good. It's bad. Bad for the staff and bad for the NHS as a whole. Like the future of the NHS depends on getting a good deal. The future, and I said the future of the labour movement depends on not not being the first to cave. They are the first line of defence against this government because they have such widespread public support, as I mentioned before. Need to get a better deal, otherwise shafted later on. And then the the government fucking wins. They they win in that case. I mean. The NHS needs to be at the forefront of a national movement similar to what we have in France happening at the moment to deal with these issues of pay in the private and public sector. Like I've got a two percent pay rise in the pub in the private sector this year, and I, that's why. So I've I've had to deal with an what an eleven percent pay cut. Like, and I should like I should I should be the I'm a union member, obviously. It's got the sign up there, but you no one else in my workplace is, so we have no we have no recourse. Membership, but for the time being, there is an agreement. Finally, after a week or so of fairly intense no negotiations by all accounts uh, between the government and the unions, and who better to update us on those negotiations than Sarah Gorton, the head of health at Unison uh, and the chair of the NHS unions? Um, you've been locked behind closed doors with the health secretary for some considerable time now. Are you pleased with the result? Well, the offer that is on the table today was hard won by health workers. So, you know, you've been covering the strike since December. So, it's taken several months of disruption to the public services in the NHS. Members have lost uh, lost money and health workers have been resolute and that's resulted in an offer coming forward. Whether it is good enough will, as you said, you know, will rest with the health workers themselves. But the elected committees in Unison, in GMB, in the BDA, the CSP, the Royal College of Nursing um, have voted today to recommend the deal as the best that can be achieved through negotiation. It's just so pathetic. It's so pathetic. Well, at least she admitted, right, that the actual decision lands with the members and they will be the person, people who actually fundamentally say whether or not this is good enough or not. But the fact that they've all just come together and say, oh, well, yeah, we, we can't negotiate any harder, guys. Sorry. And it's very, very clear that the government have literally said, if you don't accept this, we'll buttfuck you. And, you know, there you go. Th there's your offer. And I'm just like, you, you, you can't be in, in the business of negotiation and let the let the other side push you around in this manner. They have the support. They have you know every, again. What what you know when you think the stakes are high enough that the future of is, of the NHS is at stake based upon the pay offer that gets accepted or not. And if you if your response to that is well you know well if we don't accept the offer we won't get a proper pay deal and the NHS is really fucked. I'm like well then it's fucked either way. She can't even call it a good deal for the cameras. There's hope still. I mean. It's very possible that, their strategy, that the strategy that they're taking is they want to recommend the pay deal knowing that it's going to get voted down, right? <clears throat> it's possible that, they are, that the leadership of these unions just fully understand that the members will completely reject it. So the, there can be no ill will from the public towards the unions by them saying, well, we asked the members to accept it and they said no. So we're going to have to continue negotiations. Not, you know, we'll wash our hands of it, and then that gives that puts the onus back onto the government to come to the table. Maybe in my most, uh, in most charitable reading of the situation possible, is that how it might? Is that is that that's what it might? That's how it might work potentially. But it does just feel like they're completely capitulating from here, and it will be, you know, quite frankly, I said as Richard Murphy put it, the death knell for the NHS. Our post Brexit deal should show the our unions that the government is in a bunch of put as a bunch of pushovers keep fighting. 
I get what you mean, but we have to understand that the pushovers that we got from the deals were were good for the government because the government don't care about the economy; they care about getting reelected. To say we have a trade deal with you know Australia and New Zealand, even if it's bad for the UK, no one's going to scrutinise the trade deal. Who was you know was a, a floating voter in the next election? They'll be able to use the fact that there is, that there is a deal of some sort to be able to campaign on, regardless of how bad the contents are. Whereas it's the other way around in this discussion. They've not won yet, Kath. The, the nurses still may the, the nurses and the ambulance workers and all the other health staff represented by the unions, they may still reject the deal. If they reject the deal, the government hasn't won yet. Yet. That's an interesting caveat, because the, the, what I was going to ask you is, is this, in your view, a good deal or just the best deal that was achievable under the circumstances? I think, well, I mean, it, you always take these things in context, don't you? I mean, it, it would have been better if we'd had this level of investment put in the health service this time last year, because then we wouldn't have faced a situation where so many people left to go and work for better paid and less stressful jobs elsewhere. Um, that said, you know, we've, we've got an increase of 6% of the payable, which is not an insignificant amount of money, and hopefully might go some way to addressing people's cost of living pressures and, you know, help employers. But the difference is, though, even if the unions understand how bad the deals were, in the trade deals we have, it was in the government's interest to accept bad ones, whereas it's, there, it's not in the government's interest, uh, or not, it's not in the union's interest to accept bad deals in this case. ...retain staff throughout what's going to be a really busy summer. You rightly say this obviously has to go to the memberships who will ultimately decide, but with the memberships looking at this, you know, a 5.2% pay rise, would they rightly be disappointed given that at least one union, the Royal College of Nurses, started off wanting 19%? Quite a lot lower. Well, the joint um, the joint trade unions aimed to get close to inflation. We wanted an inflation busting pay increase. What we've got, if you you know, you're adding consolidated increases from last year with a, a lump sum, which is very very crude maths. But you know, broadly the investment is over 10 percent on the pay bill. Um, which, if if it had happened at times when people were facing their stiff bills, then you know that would have that would have been uh, considerably more helpful. So it is a it, you know it is a decent sum of money. I have done my level best to give members a credible choice. So health work can now decide but oh, no no actually yeah looking at the statement now it's just pathetic it's just completely pathetic i tried my level best to get this really crappy deal no i'm sorry this is pathetic you're rolling over and lying down and getting butt fucked by a government that wants you to leave the leave the industry and and t turn your career over to the private sector a friend of mine is about to start training as a nurse to get out of care work. The pay for NHS nurses is so dismal, she's been put off committing to work there, even if they cover her study costs. I doubt she's the only non-union, non-political person who makes that calculation. You're 100%. Exactly. This is, no, this, is, this is so fucking depressing. It's incredibly depressing, like, watching this stuff. There must have been some sort of threat for them to accept this deal. Yeah, like, and that's the problem when you have, you know, you, unions like the RCN, who are... Um, kind of green when it comes to industrial action and negotiations within industrial action like that, like that, like industrial action like this. Regard, for example, where they may not properly understand this, but Unison should fucking know better. You really should know better. The narrative is always, oh, they were asking for nineteen percent, and never on why they were asking for the nineteen percent. And we and people keep talking about pay increases rather than what it should. The real framing should be around pay restoration because that's what it is: pay restoration back to 2010, and an instant fix for the recruitment issues and retention issues. And even after all of the negative cover coverage, Donny, people still support the nurses. Overwhelming, a super majority of people support the nurses in their strike action. between taking further strike action and picking up an offer. I know that you know me and other trade unions work together to, uh, to engage with the government and press for as much money as we could, you know, as much additional investment. The lump sum payments that uh, health staff would receive if they were to pick this offer up range from a minimum of £1,600, just over £1,600 at the bottom of the pay scale. Most people at the top of band 5, so band 5 is where most of the registered occupations, so occupational therapists, nurses, physiotherapists, dietitians, where they come in. Um, and it would be £2,000 for those people, so a not inconsiderable sum of money.
and because we've been able to negotiate now for the pay rise for the following pay year, people would have the security of knowing that was in their pay packets early and applicable from the 1st of April, rather than waiting and crossing their fingers to see what comes out of the pay review body in the summer. Given that there is not an offer on the table, an improved... And she's, even she's capitulating to the fucking pay review body shit. <laughs> this is so painful to watch. This is so painful to watch. Oh my god. It's over. It's fucking over. It's like it's 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 over. We've we've lost. We've fucking lost, guys. Go home. Like right? we we tried, we failed. Fuck it. Maybe the nurses felt guilty, or maybe nurses just ain't got the money. They still have mortgages after all this unison character should resign. The siren is kind of fitting. Well, yeah, true. Do you think she or any others are being bribed? No, I don't think so. Unison are affiliated to the Labour Party. They wouldn't do that. Thanks for the link. I'll drop it. I'll listen. I'll watch it after this one, Donnie. Thank you for the heads up on that one. Offer as, and, and for all those reasons you, you outline, and given the disruption that this has, by your union's own admission, calls to the health service, is there now more of a uh, more pressure, more of a moral obligation on staff to accept? Well, I'm saying that a, a a trade union that's affiliated to the opposition party would not let themselves be bribed by the governing party. That's what I'm saying, right? The Labour Party themselves wouldn't be would be absolutely be happy to be get bribed, but a trade union, an independent trade union that is affiliated to the Labour Party. They sh I think it is very unlikely they would allow them to get bribed. This and, and go back to work. Well, I'd say the moral obligation was all on the Secretary of State. You know, all, all we said right from the start was that we would rather have had the opportunity to talk rather than take industrial action. You know, all of the, all of the, the, the paramedics, the nurses, the healthcare assistants, the cleaners, the whole team. Yeah, that's true. If you were being bribed, then she, would, they, she wouldn't be so lukewarm. Like, she'd be at least trying to put on a face about it. But no, it's clearly this, 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 this looks like a woman who's been beaten into submission rather than somebody who's been bribed. When is it possible that Keir's Labour could be bribing them, given they're just controlled opposition now nowadays anyway? I mean, for... <laughs> of the NHS, who you've spoken to during the course of this dispute, all of them will have told you that they would rather have their unions in rooms negotiating to get them an improved offer than taking action. We consistently ask for talks the whole way through this dispute. This has been hard won. Members deserve to have a choice. The public deserves to have a health service that has better investment. So trade unions today are pleased that oh, we... Oh, yeah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, the public deserves an extra 5% pay increase next year, not even this year. Born... Uh, oh, God. End me. End me. Have the opportunity to give them that choice. Sarah Gordon, Head of Health at Unison, thank you very much indeed.